As designers, when it comes to curating RPGs, we craft stories, create boundless worlds, and fill them with countless characters and threats. But nothing ends up being more important than the person we put at the forefront of exploring the things we create. The player, the protagonist, the hero. And while there have been countless ways we introduce our hero into the fold, it cannot be denied that one method in particular has eternally secured itself within the genre. Some have grown to loathe it, designating it an overplayed trope, and others have learned to treasure it and the feeling it brings to them. So in this week's Game Design Talk, we are going to be examining the age-old story of the Chosen One in role-playing video games. Why designers choose to use it, and why some are choosing to move away from what many consider to be an established trope not long for the world of RPG games. So without further delay, let's get into it. To understand why the choice of making our player take the role of a chosen one has become such a trope, you need to understand why designers make use of it. Making the player into a chosen one makes the designer's job easier, first of all. While this sometimes can be labeled as lazy design, and there are certainly examples of that, the important thing to understand is that quite often what is useful to the designer, what makes their job easier, also has an effect on the player, and makes things for them easier to understand or engage with. Think about it. When you know you're the chosen one, you understand your role. Your place in the game is to defeat what you are chosen against. The unique mechanics you are in possession of make sense to you. The strength you are gaining as you progress. The companions and allies that flock to you. Making the player a chosen one affords the designer a lot of liberty when crafting their experiences. This liberty, however, does not come without its faults. Such an all-encompassing method of introducing a hero is bound to lead to some bad design habits, or lazy design as mentioned before. And that has contributed to the troping of this design method. As designers, we want our protagonist and the player to be in the spotlight. We want them to feel important, like the things they're doing in our world are meaningful. But we can end up missing the mark with that, writing far too into prophecies. A proper chosen one story should do a couple of things for the player, in addition to fulfilling all of the things it affords the designer. The first thing a chosen one story needs to have is a grounded reality. When you speak to people as to their gripes with chosen one stories, they always come to the plot. They feel like they're chosen for seemingly no reason. The process for your chosen one should feel natural and experienced through gameplay. Even a title like Zelda, where the formula is repeated consistently about the legend and prophecy of a chosen one, the titles choose to have a grounded transition. Breath of the Wild, Skyward Sword, and I think my personal favorite is actually The Wind Waker. Just a brief scene living out my childhood, acquiring my sword, my family heirloom shield, and green tunic, and then being introduced to the antagonist in such an evident way. The easiest way to make it feel grounded will depend on your world and what makes sense with the narrative and goals. A game like Dragon Age Inquisition gives the player a power unique to them. They are the only one who can interact with this new form of magic and stop demons from pouring throughout Thetis. A game like Kingdom Hearts has a weapon unique to its universe, the Keyblade, and it chooses Sora. Only he can use that weapon. Almost immediately, he is a prominent figure, and the villains are targeting him accordingly. The trick is finding something in your world that can ground your chosen hero to its reality. What does the design of your world allow? It doesn't have to be limited to magic or tech of the universe. What do the politics look like? A title or a role the character can have in the society? What outside factors have influence? Gods, aliens, etc. There are boundless ways to tie your player to the world they inhabit, and it's important you do so for a successful Chosen One story implementation. The next thing that is very important to the story of Chosen Ones is failure. So many designers are scared to have their player experience defeat setbacks. But like all characters, sometimes our hero, our chosen one, needs to understand that even if they're chosen, victory isn't always certain. How many times have you played through a game and felt like you couldn't be touched? both in gameplay or narrative. It's like you're an omnipotent, knowing-all, defeating-all god. How good did it feel when you finally had taken down the great evil or the vast darkness over the land? I know how it feels. It doesn't feel very fulfilling. They feel like the prophecy is playing out exactly as mentioned at the start. And while it may be true to how a prophecy is meant to function, it isn't a very engaging method for the player. Your prophecy should have bumps in it. Maybe an event that draws the player into thinking maybe the prophecy's wrong. Maybe they aren't the only chosen one. Or maybe they have control over how their prophecy prophecy unfolds, like in a game like Kingdoms of Amalur. It's very important that your player feels chosen, but not invincible. We want them to follow a typical novel structure, not a nursery rhyme. The biggest complaint you find in a chosen one story is how invulnerable they are, so look for ways to tone that down when you can. 
And I think a final thing you should be looking for when dealing with Chosen One stories are the characters that flock to their side. While it's super important to give the Chosen One their time to shine and the power to make decisions and alter fate, it's important that those they surround themselves with aren't static. We touched on this a little in my role-playing party video, but it's especially important when dealing with a Chosen One story. I think Bioware and Obsidian are companies we can look to for inspiration in this regard. They really have well thought out and designed casts of characters that not only add perspective to a Chosen One's reality, but have interesting side plots that have them relate to the Chosen One's goal, adding further complexity to a situation people feel like they already understand. Tying your Chosen One with reality, having them fail, and surrounding them with people who aren't static objects waiting to be saved. But maybe that's not enough. Maybe the players you're looking for are played out on being the Chosen One. How do we disguise it? How do we give them all the things we're looking to give them without ever making them feel like some chosen one? To this day, I think Fallout New Vegas got this right. Make them play and earn an important part in the world. In the game, nobody would tell you they think they're the chosen one. In fact, they're a glorified Uber driver at the start. But as they leave, every interaction, every experience they have with towns and factions, they slowly morph into a chosen one without the player ever realizing it. They decide who lives or dies, who wins or loses. If you're worried about your title leaning too much into the trope of a victorious chosen one, but you want to keep your world-altering decisions, your agency, everything you're trying to give the player with this chosen one formula, try leaning into them. Let the player start as a nobody. Don't be afraid to have them come into the status of chosen one by themselves, on their own, organically. No matter your stance on Chosen Ones, it's no secret they have had a lasting impact on the genre and the industry. Countless franchises have been built using this character formula, long-lasting games that have brought in billions of dollars in revenue. And it's no secret on this channel that I am in favor of anything designers, both old and new, can use easily to great effect. And I think despite the difficulties, despite the tropes, the concept of the Chosen One is a powerful tool. And I, for one, have grown to become nostalgic of it. In fact, in recent years of designers choosing to forego this formula, I for one think we could use more games with Chosen Ones. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's game design talk on Chosen Ones in video game RPGs. How do you feel about this style of game? Do you think the Chosen One stories tend to be too tropey in your opinion? Or are you like me? And nostalgic for that kind of thing. I'm eager to hear your design opinion on this. Go ahead and leave a comment below. The best way to grow as designers is to engage in discussions like these and grow. There are no wrong answers. Until next week, this was Can't Resist Tris. Keep designing, never lose your passion, guys, and I will see you guys in the next game design talk video. Bye, guys. Oh, it's bad luck to be you. A chosen one of many is it true? When you think you're full of luck In the boards you'll get struck Oh, it's bad luck to be you